Hey guys, and welcome back! I'm Simon bringing you more Eldritch Moon spoilers! Angels have always been a focal point on Innistrad, even all the way back in the original block. With Emrakul's arrival, however, the angels have gained a whole new purpose, something to serve now that their beloved Archangel Avacyn is destroyed. But becoming a servant of Emrakul means taking on certain conditions, conditions that not even the strongest angels can avoid. Just look at the once angelic Bruna, now Bruna the Fading Light, a 5-7 angel whore legendary creature for 5 generic and double white. Whenever you cast Bruna the Fading Light, you may return target angel or human creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. She also has flying and vigilance. Driven mad by both grief and truth, Bruna has completely abandoned her flight and its once glorious purpose, leaving nothing but a dim reminder of what she once was. A sentiment I kinda share with her new card in Eldritch Moon. 7 mana for a 5-7 flying vigilance that lets you fetch another angel or a human from your graveyard back into play? It sounds fine, but really uninspired. Come on, she's covered in the essence of Emrakul. The art's amazing, I just think they could have been more creative with this card. As for playability, it's not awful, but not that great either. It's expensive, and unless you have a great human or angel in your graveyard, it's just not going to be worth it. Needless to say, Bruna the Fading Light really won't shine in limited formats. But Bruna was just one side of a pair of corrupted angelic sisters. Let's see what's become of Gisela since the rise of their new master. Let me introduce Gisela, the Broken Blade. She's now a 4-3 flying first strike lifelink angelic whore legendary creature for 2 generic and double white. Let's ignore her ability text for a moment and talk about her card. Believe me, the ability text doesn't impact this card on its own. So, it's basically a mythic 4-3 angel with flying, first strike, and lifelink for 4 mana. Again, like Bruna, Gisela feels really uninspired, at least on its own. As a mythic, I think it's actually pretty good. It's solid at the very least. Although, only having 3 toughness means she's really susceptible to a lot of removal out there. But, having first strike at least saves her from dying to combat sometimes. Pretty great for limited, and may find some constructive use. Although these cards lacked a lot of creativity, I've been looking at them in the completely wrong way. I haven't been totally honest with you guys. These cards aren't meant to be judged and reviewed separately. They must be together. Bruna and Gisela are meld creatures. Creatures who, if they're both out and in your control at the beginning of your end step, get exiled and combined to form another creature. Gisela the Broken Blade and Bruna the Fading Light meld to become their final form. Introducing Brisella, Voice of Nightmares. A couple things before we examine the card critically. Ew, that artwork though. And Brisella? Really guys? Why not Jasuna or Celebruna or you know, a completely different name? Anyway, that's beside the point. What's this card actually do? Well, it's basically a transformed card, so it has no casting cost. Brisella, Voice of Nightmares, is a 9-10 legendary creature Eldrazi Angel with flying, first strike, vigilance, lifelink, and your opponent can cast spells with converted mana cost 3 or less. So obviously this Eldrazi Angel, awesome creature type by the way, is insanely strong. It disrupts your opponent's ability to play spells, including spells that could exile Brisella, all while being just gigantic with almost every other ability under the sun. But this powerful creature comes at a cost. You need to have played and still control both Gisela the Broken Blade and Bruna the Fading Light in order to pull out Priscilla Voice of Nightmares. How often can you say this will happen? Probably not reliably. At least Bruna the Fading Light has the ability to fetch Gisela the Broken Blade from the graveyard. That's some nice synergy, but still, you had to have played Gisela and have her die in order for that to work. Maybe I'm missing something. Maybe it's easier to get Priscilla Voice of Nightmares than I'm thinking, but my initial opinion is that these cards are just too dependent on each other. Don't get me wrong, the flavor here is off the freaking charts, but I'm just concerned at how difficult it's going to be to meld Priscilla, which in turn leaves both Gisela and Bruna a lot weaker as individual cards. 
Obviously, with cards like these, they basically become unplayable in limited formats. Gisela the Broken Blade's pretty good, but abandon all hopes of getting Priscilla out of it. Anyway, in my opinion, these cards are awesome flavor and the meld super powerful and interesting. But, having so much invested in the meld means it could be difficult to warrant these cards on their own, which really hurts their playability. Let me know what you guys think about Gisela the Broken Blade, Bruna the Fading Light, and their meld, Priscilla, Voice of Nightmares, in the comments below. Do you think it will be easy to meld these creatures? If you enjoyed the video, throw it a like and subscribe to stay up to date on all the latest Eldritch Moon spoilers, news, and lore. Check out my Patreon page and social media linked in the description below. As always guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.